Hello, welcome to this lesson of Mastering Java. This is lesson number nine. Here we have, again, our uh, example we're using with the aircraft. We have the aircraft uh, class down here, same member variables, same member method that we had before. We're not changing anything. I just copied this from a previous lesson. Here we're declaring our new objects for Cessna and Piper Saratoga and populating the member variables with the information. So all of this has been copied before. What we want to do in this lesson is learn how to add methods to our class that do something other than, uh, well, I should rephrase it. We want to be able to add methods down here that take arguments uh, or parameters, calculate a result, and return the answer back up. You see, this method we have here doesn't require any argument. We just call it for the aircraft that we care about, and it multiplies or divides two of these numbers here and returns an answer. But there are many, many cases when maybe I want to use the data in here, but I want to pass a value down that's going to be involved in the calculation. The simplest example I can think of is this: um, all of these aircraft, the objects that we create, we have a variable called fuel burn rate. That's how many gallons per hour this airplane um, sucks down from the gas tank. So it might be useful to know, um, hey, if I want to fly for three hours, how many gallons of gas is that going to use? Or if I want to fly for 6.4 hours, how many gallons of gas is that going to use? That's something you do as a pilot as you, you factor in um, how long is my leg and how much am I using of gas and you want to see how much gas that takes so that you can see how much reserve you have. So it's very easy to do that. We can just add a new method here. So this is the method that we already have. We just continue, we just skip down a little bit. This closing curly is closing off the aircraft class. We want to be inside of that. And then we create a new method. And we're going to, it's going to have a double as a return value because we're going to be returning how many hours and that, uh, that we can stay aloft for a given, uh, or I should say we're going to be returning how many gallons it's going to require to fly a certain time, which can and can in some cases end up giving you a decimal value. We're going to call this method fuel needed, right? And we're going to open up uh, the uh, guy here, and then we'll do an opening curly brace, hit enter, and there we have the closing curly brace automatically created. Now inside of here, we want to pass a number down into the method down here, and the uh, number that we're going to pass is time because here we have gallons per hour we we want to know how many gallons is going to take to fly two hours or to fly four hours or to fly eight hours or whatever so we'll create another variable uh, as a parameter inside of the parentheses and call it time so whatever number we stick in here is going to be temporarily associated with something called time now inside of the method we want to do the calculation and return the result all right and so what we can do is we can just put the return keyword here and do the calculation as follows. We can say uh, fuel burn rate times time semicolon. Notice what this is doing. So if we call this method, then let's say we call it with three hours. We want to be in the air for three hours. That number gets associated with this variable called time. We take that variable, multiply it by the burn rate, which is gallons per hour, multiplied by hours will give us a number in terms of gallons. It's going to result in an answer that's a double because the, the variable I'm or the parameter I have defined here is a double. It's multiplied by fuel burn rate, which is a double. So the return value will be a double, which matches what I've typed in front of the uh, uh, name of the method. So basically the return value has to match what you put out here. All right, now I'm doing the calculation inside of the return statement. I don't have to do that. I could come and create another variable here and, and calculate it and assign it to a variable and then return the name of that variable. It's all the way that you want to do it. And we've kind of seen that before when we've worked with methods. But in any case, this will be perfectly fine to do this way. So after we've assigned this information, let's go and do system.out.println. And then inside of here, uh, we can do something like um, for for Cessna 172 to fly for 2.5 hours, it takes, uh, and I'm going to do I'm going to do the calculation, however many gallons of fuel it takes. So over here, I'm going to do a plus sign, and here I'm going to call that method. So I'm going to say Cessna. Let me go ahead and do a spacer. Cessna 172 dot and when I hit the dot 
Notice I have all of my member variables, but now I have different options. The endurance option is what I used before. Here is the new method I just calculated, so I'll double click that. And so this is the method it's asking for, and it's asking me to put a number in for the time because that's what I'm trying to do. So I'm going to put 2.5 because that's how many hours I'm, I'm after here. And then I will put another plus sign here. Um, I will put gallons of fuel. All right. And because this is kind of a long statement, uh, let's just leave it on one line. It's not that hard to understand. So what we have is for Cessna 172 to fly for 2.5 hours, it takes, and then this is calling the method. It's calling the fuel needed method that's a member of this object, and it's passing a value of 2.5. So what happens is the code then jumps down here, and it comes into this method with 2.5 in here. It assigns 2.5 to this number, multiplies by the fuel burn rate for the Cessna, because we're calling it from the Cessna object. It returns a number back to the caller, which in this case is going to be stuck right inside of a print statement. So this whole thing's going to result in a number and then we append gallons of fuel. So the whole point is to calculate how many gallons of fuel. So let me hit save and let me hit run. For a Cessna F-172 to fly for two and a half hours, it takes 23.75 gallons of fuel. So now you can see how this would be useful information to know. Let's say I'm planning a, a flight on another day and I want to go for 4.2 hours. So then I can go over here and change the value that I pass in terms of time to 4.2 hours. I can hit save and run. For Cessna 172 to fly for 4.2 hours, it takes 39.9 gallons of fuel. Now, of course, we've done this calculation just for the Cessna, but since we've added the method to the class, we can use it to operate on any objects that we've created from the class. So let me, just to make this simple to show you, let me go ahead and copy this whole print line. I'm just going to hit Control-C to copy it. And then over here, I'll just skip down a little bit. I'll hit Control-V to paste it. And then I'm going to change it a little bit. So for, uh, for the Piper to fly for, let's do it for, well, let's leave it 4.2 hours. Then we will change this, this guy right here. Let me go ahead and delete that just to show you what, what's going to pop up. Piper. Sarah Toga, that's the object that we have dot. Whenever the dot comes up, I can select calculate endurance or fuel needed. That's the one I need. And I'm going to put a value of 4.2 hours, gallons of fuel. So it's basically the exact same print statement, but I'm using the, uh, the method associated with Piper Saratoga and I'm passing the 4.2 down there. Whenever it gets down here, then it multiplies the time times the fuel burned for the Piper. The reason it's using the Piper information is because it's part of that object. So let me go ahead and hit run. For a Piper to fly 4.2 hours, it takes 86 gallons of fuel. So you might look at this and say, well, for a Cessna, it takes 39 gallons to go for this many hours. And for a Piper, it takes almost twice as much to go for 4.2 hours or a little more than twice as much. Boy, isn't a Piper a terrible airplane? So then you might just look at those numbers and say it's terrible. But don't forget, the Piper can carry more people, and it actually goes faster. So, you know, you may, you may actually travel a longer distance there. The point is that you can take and, and put, um, let's do 1.25, for instance. And for the Piper, you can calculate at 1.25. Whatever number you pass it, you can display a different result. All right? So that's very, very important for you to understand. So what we have here is the capability to add into a class uh, numerous methods. Here we have a method already in the class that doesn't require any arguments. It just calculates something and returns a value. And here we've demonstrated when we can add a method to the class that requires an argument, a calculation is performed, and it returns the value back from above. That's what you're going to see more times than not is a situation when the method actually calculates something that uses an argument, and then you return the value up above. And I can use these uh, method calls in print statements. I can use them for arithmetic. I can use them in mathematical computations uh, and so on. So that's basically what's happening there. Uh, make sure you understand what's going on here and then I strongly encourage you to go off to the exercises here whenever I uh, we work in with the grocery store class because that is another example of when you'll get some practice working with methods and classes in Java. So we could add additional classes uh, or I should say additional methods down here to calculate different things. The main idea for you to realize is if you're accepting an argument, you uh, 
operate on the member variable, return the value back, and I hope you can see that grouping all this stuff together in a class definition makes a lot of sense because it's all relevant for the same thing. And if I create, here I have two airplanes, a Cessna and a Piper, I can go create six more airplanes and populate it with the appropriate information. I don't have to do this calculation numerous times. I've defined it once and then I can just pass it values uh, as we need in order to calculate what we're trying to do. So go off to the exercise right now, work on that, and then follow me on to the next lesson where we'll continue working with Java.